Has there been a more confounding program in America than St. John's? For being in a city littered with basketball history and culture, with iconic venues, legendary players, and passionate fans, the Red Storm haven't really seemed to consistently capitalize on their location. Sure, it's hard competing with the Knicks for attention, and the recruiting hotbed that was once New York City has been poached by prep schools in other areas of the country, but it is still New York, right? And frankly, it's hard to imagine just how anonymous St. John's basketball has been over the last few decades. Sure, they had those Chris Mullen-led teams in the 1980s, headlined by a Final Four appearance in 1985, but outside of that, the results of the program have oscillated between moderately promising and largely disappointing. Since 2000, St. John's has only made it to five NCAA tournaments, with their last tournament win coming in 2000, where they were a two-seed that ultimately lost to this little up-and-coming school named Gonzaga in the second round, and in that same time span, they've also seen five head coaches come and go. And that number is actually six if you count Kevin Clark, who spent the majority of the 2003-04 season in charge after the school fired Mike Jarvis six games into the campaign. And since then, no coach has been able to see legitimate and sustained success at St. John's. Norm Roberts came and went without an NCAA tournament appearance. Steve Lavin had some nice years but soon found himself working on FS1. Chris Mullen couldn't recreate the magic he brought to the program as a player. And most recently, Mike Anderson couldn't get things together after a four-year stint that ended this past March, despite him signing a huge six-year extension in 2021. While the firing of Anderson doesn't make sense timing-wise in a vacuum, it immediately becomes clear when you consider who was available. Richard Andrew Patino. Unlike St. John's, Rick Patino has seen tons of success throughout his basketball lifespan. Dating back to the mid-1970s, Patino has taken five different schools to NCAA tournaments, starting with Boston University in 1983, and most recently with Iona this past year. And in between those, he's also taken Providence, Kentucky, and Louisville to a Final Four, winning a national championship at the latter two. And before anyone tries to light me up in the comments about the legitimacy of the 2013 title with Louisville, you should know that this channel acknowledges vacated championships, so please just take it easy, man. All in all, Patino's college coaching resume is one of the best in the sport. He's one of only two coaches, John Calipari being the other one, to take three different schools to a Final Four, and the only coach in NCAA history to win a tournament with two different programs. Unless you count his short-lived stint as head coach of the Boston Celtics, he's won pretty much everywhere he's been. And now, as the 71-year-old takes on a new challenge, there's reason to be hopeful about the storm that's brewing. Despite only having the job since late March, Patino has been able to fully form a retooled roster thanks to his recruiting chops and team building savvy. During his most recent stint at Iona, Patino amassed a cumulative record of 64 and 22, including wins over respected programs like Alabama, St. Louis, and Princeton, while also getting the two NCAA tournaments. And some of the personnel that helped him be so successful at Iona are following him on the less than 20 mile journey to St. John's, including star Danis Jenkins. After spending his first two collegiate seasons at Pacific, Jenkins decided to transfer to Iona where he quickly became one of the Gales' most important players, starting every game and averaging a little under 16 points and 5 assists per contest. At 6'3", the All-MAAC honoree is a wiry guard with a quick first step and great maneuverability with the ball. He thrives getting downhill and putting pressure on interior defenses, and he also greatly improved as a shooter this past season at Iona, bolstering his percentage from the mid-20s at Pacific to 36% in his lone year with the Gales. This also allowed him to really shine as a passer, as he led the conference in assists per game, showcasing a great ability to make decisions on the fly. He's an awesome off-schedule player who can quickly change his passing target with little hesitancy. In addition to Jenkins, Patino also recruited a pair of Ivy League transfers in Penn's Jordan Dingle and Harvard's Chris Ledlam. And in Dingle, St. John's gets last season's leading scorer in the Ivy League, and with Ledlam, the leading rebounder. Dingle is another 6'3 guard who has improved in each of his three seasons as a college player, and last year was his best year yet, averaging 23.4 points per game on 46-36-86 shooting splits, and on paper, he fits really well next to Jenkins because of his ability to play off the ball as a secondary handler. Dingle is someone who is much more comfortable scoring than distributing, and having a guard like Jenkins will ease his transition into high major basketball. In return, Dingle provides Patino and St. John's with someone who is comfortable taking shots at a high volume, which is what every successful college team needs. He's able to create his own shot at all three levels, and defensively, he has an ability to make timely plays for easy buckets. Ledlam comes from Harvard after also having an incredibly successful season in the Ivy League, as he averaged close to 19 points and 8.5 rebounds per game. 
Despite only being 6'6", six six, Ledlam's thick frame allows him to play bigger than his size in a way that I think will translate to the Big East. While he's not particularly known as a shooting threat, Ledlam has a really underrated handle at his size that allows him to get downhill and use his physicality to finish at the rim. He'll also provide St. John's with some rebounding beef, which is a responsibility he should be sharing with one of the few returnees from last year's Red Storm team, Joel Soriano. Soriano averaged a double-double last season for St. John's with 15 points and 11 rebounds per game, and he showed that he could really succeed in a variety of offensive roles. He can be a bruiser on the interior and established post position, he can be utilized as a screener and rim runner, and he also showed some flashes of a downhill driving game with the ability to face up and hit mid-range shots. Defensively, he has decent movement skills and instincts, which allow him to survive in switches as a rim protecting big. Around this core group of four are solid wing pieces in Oregon State transfer Glenn Taylor Jr. and former NCAA champion Naheem Aline, who played a key role with UConn last year, and Patino has also put together a solid recruiting class with 6'4 guard Simeon Wilcher, who's a top 50 player in the class, and 6'7 sharpshooter Brady Dunlap, who committed to the Red Storm after decommitting from Notre Dame when Mike Bray stepped down. Patino also got more young depth pieces via the portal in Kansas transfer Zuby Ejiofor, Iona's Cruz Davis, and UMass standout RJ Luis, who may not be featured guys on this year's team, but will definitely play key roles for Patino on future St. John's teams down the line. And by the way, he's already started bolstering those future teams, as he just managed to get a commitment from 7-foot big man Kaman Maker and 6'6 guard Jaden Glover, who's considered a top 60-ish guy in the class of 2024 nationally. With those two guys in the fold for 2024, St. John's currently has a top 20 recruiting class in the country. Considering where St. John's started after letting go of Mike Anderson, you could say that Rick Pitino has New York's Big East school in a pretty decent spot. Per Bart Torvik's talent metrics, St. John's actually has a quote-unquote better team than squads like San Diego State and Northwestern, and given that they only retained two players from last year's roster, the fact that Patino was able to field a somewhat competitive team on paper is really impressive. But as a disclaimer, St. John's is entering a grinder of a schedule. You mess with Kurt and you go into the grinder. Okay, now this grinder of yours, is it a real grinder or is it some kind of a metaphor? <laughs> That's it! You're gone! As the Big East this year might be the most loaded conference in the country, with teams like Marquette, Creighton, UConn, Providence, Georgetown, and Villanova all having really promising squads. Still, I think the future is bright for St. John's, and that's honestly the first time I can realistically say that with some level of certainty. Because if there's one thing that always seems to work in college basketball, it's Rick Pitino. Thanks so much for watching, and give me your thoughts below.